Get ready! You're tuned in to Tea Time Unfiltered with your girl, Lovely T, bringing you the hottest trending topics on social media. Stay connected. Instagram.com slash Lovely Tea 2002. Hey, you guys. Welcome to another episode of Tea Time Unfiltered with your girl, Lovely T. Hey! Hey, everybody. Happy Memorial Day. I hope you guys had a good Memorial Day weekend. Um, it was kind of cold and dreary up here, but today is a beautiful day here in the Twin Cities. I hope everybody is doing well. Um, I've been under the weather, but I'm trying to hang in there. So I wanted to do an update on the whole T.I. and Tiny situation. I've been giving you guys continuous updates and some more information came out this weekend. And I want to break everything down to you all via podcast. So what's going on is that if you guys do not know, Sabrina Peterson came out the other day. And she basically stated on her live stream on Instagram that she was willing to settle for an apology from T.I. And that T.I. and Tiny had seven days to give her an apology and also admit that they put a gun to her head, that T.I. put a gun to her head, and that she would drop the defamation of character lawsuit. So I want you guys to go ahead and check out her video really quick. Check this out. Tell the truth about me. Tell the truth about what you did to me and apologize. I'm gone. I don't want one dime. I don't want one dime. And here's the other stipulation. Do it within seven days. Do it within seven days. I don't want when you just dis- listen, do this, what I'm saying right now, within seven days. Within seven days, tell the truth and apologize. And I'm gone. Sabrina, she done with. I want. I don't want a dime from you or X, Y, and Z. But if I gotta keep drawing this shit out, I gotta keep stepping away from my motherfucking brand. I gotta keep stepping away from my weed and my weed jars. I gotta keep stepping away from my motherfucking packaging. I gotta step keep stepping away from my damn my fundraising. I'm supposed to be doing my twelve million dollar fundraise. If I gotta keep stepping away from my goddamn desk to answer these motherfucking calls, then bitch, you won't. Then, then, then that's it, it is what it is. Seven days. Seven days. Apologize and tell the fucking truth. That's it. And I'm done. And I'm done. I'm at your hair. Nothing else. Nothing else. Same place you went did a video on. Go apologize. Just say, hey, hey. I, I. That's it. I don't want no. I don't need. I don't need no dime from nobody. But if I gotta keep stepping away from my dime to go for counseling to deal with all this shit. All right, so you guys just saw her video. And to me, I just feel like, Sabrina, you have kicked up way too much dust to now say that you'll simply walk away from everything if they apologize. Let's not forget this is the same woman who basically opened up this jar of worms to have T.I. and Tiny under investigation. So you can't kick up all this shit and then two months down the line say that you're willing to drop everything if T.I. simply apologizes. So anyhow, word got back to T.I. So he took to his Instagram page and he basically posted a picture of him from the Rock Nation brunch. And it's T.I., Neo, Dave Chappelle, uh, Kevin Hart, and they're all laughing at a joke. And so T.I. says, an apology, Draco voice, hashtag what it's come to. Basically saying like, bitch, the nerve of you to say that you'll stop all this mess over a simple apology. So basically, T.I. is not going to apologize, you know, and if she feels like she has a case, then let's go ahead and move forward. You kick this jar open. So let's go ahead and get down in the courtroom. So it's been over seven days. There's been no apology from T.I. But funny enough, okay, a video surfaced of T.I. and Tiny at a church. And during this, they're being given an award, which is strange to me because I didn't know churches were giving out awards to people, but they're giving T.I. and Tiny an award. And T.I. starts to go on this rant about everything that's going on in his personal life. He starts talking about the claims against him. He says the devil is a lie, um, that he's not a creep. Um, and the whole time he's holding his daughter, Eris. So this video was very, very interesting. I want you guys to go ahead and listen to T.I. right now. A young lady we all know. Her name is, we call her Tiny. Pastor called her Tamika. We call her husband T.I. Pastor called him Clifford. We love them. We respect them. They always 
on time when Pastor Collins say he needs something, they do it behind the scenes. They don't do it in front of the scenes. They do it behind the scenes. So a lot of y'all say, well, who put, they do it behind the scenes. He called and say, I need, they do behind the scenes. And we thank them for that. So I'm going to tell y'all a little bit, because I was writing this, and I was like, oh, she done did a whole lot. I didn't know she did all of that. But Tamika Tiny Harris is an American singer-songwriter. She rose to fame in the 1990s as a member of the multi-platinum R&B vocal group Escape. And let me say this, how many of y'all watched Escape versus, uh, yeah, see, see, see what I'm saying? Yeah, so I will tell y'all the truth. I was an Escape groupie, because I was, you know, back in the 90s, you know, I was an Escape groupie, so I used to sing all these songs, and I should have been a member of the group, girl, because I had all that pack. Tamika was born in College Park to Diane Carter and Charles Speedy Pope. Her father and her uncle formed the R&B group, The Tams. Now my daddy know about them. Okay. Tamika joined the R&B group Escape in 92 while attending Tri-Cities Performing Arts High School. She was discovered by producer Jermaine Dupree while singing at his birthday celebration in Atlanta. As a member of the group, she has contributed to three of the band's platinum albums. She has also recorded on soundtrack for Soul Food, Panther, Bad Boys, and Love Jones. In 98, after the release of Escape's third album, Traces of My Lipstick, the band parted ways, and each member decided to take a separate path in the entertainment industry. In 2000, she and fellow Escape member Candy Burris were honored with the Grammy Award for Best R&B for penning TLC's No Scrubs. Didn't even know that. And they also penned the song Shape of You by Ed Sheeran. Cottle's other accomplishments include an American Society of Composer, Authors, and Publishers Award. She has worked with artists like A. Paul, M.I.G., Lil' Kim, Bow Wow, and others. In 2014, she released her solo single. Within hours, it reached the number five spot on the iTunes R&B Soul Charts, and in less than 24 hours after its release, it became the number one song on the charts. In 2001, she started to date this young guy named Clifford T.I. Harris. But it wasn't until July 2, 2010, in Miami Beach, that the couple tied the knot. Their union brought together Zonique, Tamika's oldest daughter, Messiah, Deja, and Dominique, Clifford's children. And together, they added Clifford Harris III, King, Major, and Harris to finish out the Harris clan. All members of the family are part of the Family Hustle VH1 show that premiered in 2011. So to Tamika, Tiny, Miss Cottle Harris, Miss Harris, this is your time to shine. And we want to say they just got off the plane from California, so that's why we kind of held it out so they can be here. But they just got the plane, but mom is here. Hey mom. And siblings and family and friends. We all thank you all for being here. And this says, honoring Tamika Tiny Paula Harris on May 23rd from the Women Who Cabin Missionary Baptist Church for breaking ground for women in the entertainment industry. P.O. Redmond Jr. Pastor and Father. This is one of our own, y'all. She a member of this church. Thank you, guys. Thank you, Pastor. Thank you to my church. Um, I gotta always thank Pastor because Pastor calls me on a regular, make sure I'm doing good, you know. And thank you, I'm sorry that I'm so late, um, but um, I appreciate you for thinking about me and honoring me, you know. Um, I am terrible at speaking, so I just wanted to say I'm honored to be here, I'm honored to be honored and thought about for everything you do. Oh yeah, here's the speaker of the family. <laughs> I called Clifford just as much as I called Tamika. Don't Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Good morning and God bless everybody. I want to say it's a blessing to be a blessing. Oh, yes, yes, um, if, I have, if I have one message, it is that God is real and the devil is a despicable lie. Yeah. 
Anybody who know me, you know my family, more than knowing us as human beings, they know our hearts. Right. And uh, they know how much we are first on the front lines to do for whoever needs to be done for and to sacrifice a part of ourselves to give to others. Because that's how we was raised. We come from good stock. You dig what I'm saying? We didn't just roll out of bed and become tempted to be good, you know what I'm saying? This started, it was seeds planted way, way back long ago. Her longer than me, but way back. <laughs> longer for her than it is for me, but way back long ago, that was seeds planted. You know what I mean? The soil was fertilized, it was watered, and sun hit it, and love was put into it. And there were lessons learned, and it brought us all the way to right here. We didn't just roll out of bed and get here and just end up this way, you understand what I'm saying? Uh, and contrary to whatever you may uh, 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 pass by as you scroll on this fictitious universe that we all live in called social media, the real and the truth and the honesty of it all is that everybody is a, a, a culmination of their experiences. And I mean, we are all a product of what we've been since we ain't never had nothing but nonsense handed down to us. Then when we see others, we're gonna expect to have, we're gonna expect them to be about nonsense. But see, I'm sorry, whoever needs to hear this, I don't know who it is. I'm sorry that I ain't the creep that you want me to be, but that ain't what I was raised to be. And I don't care how much you say it, it ain't gonna make it true for me. You did, I got a God up there. You understand? And he done put in me take away from me. You know what I'm saying? So now I ain't gonna do too much talking because I always get to argue with preacher about me being a preacher one day, but that ain't my path. I keep telling him. I keep telling him. But I'ma keep it all way, I'm gonna keep it all with a thousand with you. Oh, yeah. Anybody know me, man, you a judge of oh. character. Look at my eyes. Oh. Look at my eyes, and you can see where I'm coming from, you can see who I am. I ain't never hear from nobody, I ain't never ran from no adversity, ain't nobody never made me talk to hell, never, about nothing. And it ain't gonna start now, you understand what I'm saying? I have nothing but love and respect, thank you for honoring my beautiful wife here. You know, uh, she deserves to be celebrated. She deserves to be celebrated, not to be betrayed. You did because it's a, but, 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 but the, the God that we here to serve is a glory. He would take what the devil meant for bad and use it for good. He would use some of the roughest times in your life to reveal to you what you should be doing, who you should be around, how you should be engaging, and the things that you should do more and do less. You dig what I'm saying? That's what these lessons of life is all about. Now I'm here for it, you understand? And, and, and I promise you, anything and everything you've ever seen me go through, me and mine have always made it through the other side, bigger and better. This will be no different, love. All right, so you guys just saw the video and heard what T.I. had to say. Now, what I find interesting about all of this is that usually when people are under investigation, and this is going to be a, and this is a serious case, lawyers tell their peoples to shut up. Well, you who shut is up, on, listen, who is on your list, Joe? <laughs> okay, this is literally the third time now that T.I. has spoken out. We remember that live stream that he did in that forest, trying to denounce the claims. Then he spoke out again about two weeks ago, and now he's speaking out in church. So he's steadily speaking out about this, and he's not letting the court system play out and do their job. Now, another thing that people are finding funny about this whole situation with T.I. running to church is if you guys do not know, in 2019, T.I. kind of went on this hobo tour where he was basically denouncing religion. He was calling out Christians. He was calling out the Christian church. He was calling out pastors like um, Jamal Bryant. Um, you know, for basically trying to force celebrities to give more money to the church. He was even talking about his experience at Kanye West's church and, you know, his views on religion. And it was so much so that even comedians were clowning him because there was a picture of him that went viral a year ago where he was in church with Tiny and his face was screwed up. And the comedian Shola King, you know, clowned him for his expression. This went viral all over social media. I'll go ahead and tell what the comedian had to say about T.I.'s expression, what he had to say about the church and religion in general. Y'all check this out. Uh, 
Ladies and gentlemen, what anybody want to tell me what in the expeditious exploitation is going on here? Why is T.I. in church mean mugging the pastor like this? Like, what, what, what's going on, Tip? We we get it. I, like, okay, I, I already know, Tip, you don't want to be there. We already get this. Like, that's it's written all over your face. You don't have to say a word. We know that it's obvious that, brother, you you don't care to be there. But, you know, it, it, at least act like, you know, don't we, we it, it, I don't know what you were thinking, but did, you got to do a better job of keeping your faults off of your face. It's the biggest lie told to black Man, folks here in the U.S. God is real. I know God is real, not because nobody told me, because I've seen the impact he's had on my life, and I've seen things that nothing else and nobody, no human could have had a hand in, in, in affecting. And God did. I know God is real. I feel it. I have my own conversation. I have my own conversation with him. I have my own relationship with him. Uh, matter of fact, the closest you can get to speaking to God is when you hear your own voice in your head. Because if God going to speak to you, he's not going to speak to you in no ominous voice like an echo in Morgan the hallway. Freeman. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? He's going to speak to you. It's going to be your voice. He's going to speak to you in the, most, in the most relatable voice that you know, the most familiar voice that you could possibly know, and that's your own. You dig what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. uh, so my relationship with God does not require a middleman. I don't need nobody to get my prayers to God to patch me through. I don't need nobody to do that. Mm -hmm. I don't got to go no place, no significant place to do that. I ain't got to pay no money to do that. Mm -hmm. And anybody who tell me that, I do, I know you full of it. Uh, religion is the biggest remote control ever known to man. It's the first, probably the first form of technology. You know what I mean? It's a joystick. If you control people's thoughts, if you get people to come in and sit down and give confessions when they can't see you but you can see them, you can manipulate them. You can manipulate them. You can play on their emotions. So I cut my fellowshipping short at Magic City. To go to church. <laughs> to go and get me 45 minutes of sleep. Yeah. To get up and drive by here to be accosted and uh, basically Try exploited. Finesse after some money. And when I sat down, as soon as I sat down, remind you, I tell you, they already raised the offering. Jamal already raised the offering. Yeah. When we sat down, there was a whole new agenda. A whole new agenda, fool. It was, when me and Tit is up oh, there, two multimillionaires, though, actually three counting Tamika, three multimillionaires on yeah, the front row. Yeah, but it's like they rung the red bell at the Players you know, Club. You know, hey, you know what? Bello, you so, dig what I'm saying? Bello said, Bello said, oh. Oh, yeah, there's some money, And granted. then he says, but now we're going to get to a special, a special sermon. And I was like, oh, okay. He got to be talking about Sunday service. Cool. And he says, all the way from Houston. I'm like, Kanye came from Houston? And then he says, whatever dude name was and brought the other pastor out there. And I can't remember this pastor's name, but he must have been the tithe whisperer. His entire sermon was about sacrifice, giving money, giving money. Now, listen, I understand that churches live off of the contributions from the congregation. I do it. Mm. And so, you know, that's what he did. But then he said, what I need right now, I need 20 people to give up $1,000. Let's mm -hmm. count. 20 people. Stand up if you... And so people start standing up. Are you a thousand dollars? Yeah, that's what they said. Twenty, twenty people. Twenty people, a thousand dollars. Yeah, I'm looking around. Never seen this before. And at this point, I see, it, I know exactly what's going on. And I'm, I'm I was looking at you like this. I love this man. You know what I'm saying? Because I, I see what's going on, and I can't believe everybody's going for oh. it. Um, but I don't want to be too critical of the overall, because I know so many black people. They depend on that Sunday inspiration and they think it get but but the problem I had with the guy this is this is it when he was counting the 20 for the thousand dollars for people paper when he said this this is when I really got mad come on y'all get your blessings heard no no are you telling me <laughs> keep going my god yep needs me to pay you a thousand dollars so he could hear my blessings. 
So you now, can hear my prayers. Now y'all know that's how the Vatican was built. Yeah, man. But see that this what is, I'm saying. This is plagued. This see? has plagued many churches for a long time. All right. So you guys just saw his interviews with Hot 97, where he talked about going to Kanye's church and pastors being greedy. You guys saw his interview um, with V105 as well, where he talked about religion and things like that. So a lot of people are kind of calling him out. Like, hold up now. A year ago, you were on this whole boat tour against religion and against the church. But now that you're in hot water and these allegations keep coming out against y'all, now you guys are in the pulpit talking about God and religion after saying that you didn't believe in organized religion. So a lot of people are now calling out his hypocrisy because for so long he went in on the church but now that he's in trouble he's running back to the church you know and i just find it you know kind of silly that all of this is taking place at a church because like i said before i don't understand when churches started giving out awards when it should be about god it shouldn't be about you know you saying that that was your favorite group as a child and you were you know the the fifth member of escape and just all types of weird stand worship when it should be about worshiping god now, what I find very, very interesting is that the very next day, which was Saturday the 29th, now this video was leaked on Friday, three more victims came out against T.I. So now T.I. has some fresh allegations against him. Yahoo News was the first people to break it. So I'm going to go ahead and read to you guys what's being announced. Yo, what's up? Hey, tea sippers to listen to the rest of this podcast, please go to Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google Play, Stitcher, Tuned In, or AnchorFM.com, which is a free podcasting site. Thank you guys so much for the support, and stay tuned for the next video.